Hello and welcome to a, another GSA Roundtable and it is my complete pleasure to be joined by three major players in the industry. We have, if you can give me a wave gentlemen, we have Cliff Jones, who's the Sales Director at One to One Diet by Cambridge Weight Plan. We have hello. Mark Franklin, hello, hello. <laughs> Mark Franklin, who is the Managing Director at Osborne Books and we hello. have Alessandro Martinez, Managing Director of Four Work UK and Ireland. So welcome gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, um, to discuss uh, discuss what's been happening in the sector and where we go. And I think it's been an extraordinary 18 months for the channel, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me, that the last year saw the greatest pace of change um, the retail channel history has ever really seen. Um, and I think the pandemic obviously was a massive catalyst for rapid transformation of which our sector had to move very quickly. You know, we are social selling, we were face to face, we were very much about getting people together. And all of a sudden when that wasn't in impact, you know, we weren't empowered to do that and we weren't allowed to, we had to really change um, and face new ways that consumers wanted to shop, um, how people wanted to do and, and kind of, you know, keep, keep, that, uh, keep that going. Interestingly, our sector, and I, I'm the first person to hold my hands up and say, in March, when um, Boris announced the first three weeks lockdown, I thought, well, that's our sector doomed. We're absolutely going to collapse. We'll see, you know, we'll, we'll have, be having a crisis, as it were. But actually, growth, the new data which uh, the DSA has just gathered together, shows that there's been a 45% year-on-year growth in sales, which is absolutely phenomenal, with over £1 billion now contributing through the channel, um, which is incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, uh, we're one of the strongest annual growth periods on record since 1970s when all the Tupperware parties were happening and we all know that you had you, you couldn't couldn't go a weekend without having a Tupperware party then could you it was a, it was an absolute given so the digital transformation as I said has you know Covid has acted as a real catalyst for that digital transformation and I think we'll come on in a little while to talk about how that's affected your businesses and, and the, you know the transformations you've made but I think it's quite interesting to note that Avon just carried out a new research and they took 2,000 women um, released um, sorry new research of 2,000 women released um, in the last week found that almost half 46 percent of UK women now are currently considering digital different career options to allow more flexibility. And a third of those, that's 35% of working mothers would go as far to say, actually, they'd be really happy to take a pay cut if it meant more flexibility in working hours. And over half of the women agreeing that they would much rather work for themselves and get flexibility. So I think what's happened is we've had seen this massive sway of change. We've seen, you know, we've seen unprecedented levels of different ways of living. Um, and I think that's gonna have a knock on effect as we move out of 2012, 2012. <laughs> reverse those numbers, 2021 even, <laughs> and, two, and 2022. And it's just going to be fantastic, isn't it? So direct seller in 2021, uh, the DSA recently undertook a major new study. Um, and we contacted all of our direct sellers. So we've had over 4,000 people get involved, which is fantastic and really good base for us to start working on what the future looks like. Um, so ultimately, of the you know the people earning money this way, the UK now has about 631,000 people People earning money independently um, through uh, through direct selling organisations, which is an incredible statistic. You know that's amazing. As I say, can earlier contributing over a billion pounds, but that's um, that's an increase of about twelve percent year on year across the industry. So at a time when other retail channels really struggled and saw demise, and sadly we saw lots of shops close, and I I think we've only, if we're honest, started to touch on what could possibly happen moving forward as as the world starts to change. Um, so it's kind of gone from a people having a side hustle to a sole hustle whereas people were just doing it as a little part-time job to maybe bring some extra money in all of a sudden have made it their sole hustle that they're just going to create their careers around it which um which i think is fantastic um and we've seen the average earnings increase to about 481 pounds a month so it's you know it's not a bad way of earning some money and obviously that's still from people doing it part-time right the way through to uh, to full-time as, as an average so direct selling's always been an industry powered by mostly by women, uh, but I think interestingly we've started to really see a mixture now across across genders, and we've seen many many more men into this, and we're just wanting the more entrepreneurial lifestyle. So uh, so it's an exciting time ahead for sure. But I think you've probably heard enough about me, enough for me, and I'm 
So um, last year, as I said, I've seen some of the strongest growth. But I think for me, it's a question initially to Alessandro as to your experience through through this, you know, from Vorwerk. What um, what what have you learned? Absolutely, Susanna. Uh, yeah, 2020 has been the best year ever for the Forward Group. And uh, in UK and Ireland, we have been able to capitalize this opportunity better than any other sister company. In fact, last year, we were the fastest growing market in Europe. So we almost doubled the turnover in the UK and Ireland, and our uh, base, cons uh, consultant base grew over 50%. We continue to see the uh, strong trajectory of growth. So uh, for the first six months, we are over 55%. And uh, so we still see some strong momentum to our business. As you said before, there is no doubt that COVID-19 has changed the landscape of many businesses and tested their resilience. So there's been a catalyst of a rapid transformation. So for us, consumer homes have become a safe haven during the pandemic and continue to be the epicenter of life and experience. And for our business that uh, uh, brings high quality products and service in the field of culinary and cleaning, so right in the home, uh, in the center of home, this has been very beneficial. So it's uh, indeed our business is well positioned to benefit from this change. The key point is co customers' behavior is evolving. And in order to be successful, we need to adapt too. So uh, we have seen a change in how consumer get new information, what they purchase, where they purchase, and how they live such experience, everything is changing. And as such, uh, we need to be able to provide a credible solution to our customers. During the pandemic, people's confidence has been eroded and, uh, and consumers will uh, buy more and more from business they, whom they can trust. And I do believe that they're excelling as uh, pivots toward the uh, that human interaction and engagement between consultant and customers are a better place to provide uh, that uh, credible solution to our customers. But even more, they, we have seen that the, the winners during this time of pandemics have been those businesses that have been able to capitalize and take advantage of the digital platform. And for me, this is not just about uh, choosing between a virtual or face-to-face -face interaction is about getting the best of both worlds. And this is what we have been trying to do within our business. Of course, uh, we have seen during this time more and more focus on healthy lifestyle or sustainability. And that's what, of course, we are uh, mm, also pushing as a, as a business. And we are very proud as a business that we are so uh, focus on this area. So from my perspective, when I was talking to my consultant, I, the feedback I gave to them during this time, first of all, is to be good listeners, to understand our customer needs, pivot the experience to what our customers want, learn from our customers and that they becoming more innovative and more and more be bold and reassess our business continuously. Just to give an example, as also stated by the, uh, the, survey, the, the report from Direct Selling, over 60% of our consultants have joined during the time of pandemic. So they never run them in the pre-pandemic time. They never run face-to-face -face demonstrations. So this is why we have now encouraged particularly the more experienced to provide more training and support to help them to, to be able to navigate to the new world that we are going to face. Sanjo, thank you so much. And you know, you, you touched there on digital and I think you're absolutely right. I mean, 2021 has been particularly significant, you know, coming out of 2020 to the acceleration of, of almost a digital evolution and that online transformation. And I think it showed, for me, it showed how this sector is so incredibly um, you know, we adapt so quickly, we're so incredibly entrepreneurial that rather than saying, actually, this doesn't work for us anymore, we're going to have to kind of, you know, close our close our doors and, and not social sell, we moved on to digital. So, Mark, with that in mind, what, what do you think has driven this? And obviously, other than the pandemic, but the digital transformation, what, what does that look like in Osborne Books? Uh, thanks, Susanna. Really interesting to hear from Alexandra. There are so many things there that I completely agree with. Uh, from a digital point of view, and again, picking up on Alessandro's words, so many of our new organisers have joined during pandemic when they couldn't be face to face and hand sell books, which is traditionally how our model operates. So they've become comfortable with this idea of sort of communicating through the screen. Now, again, Alessandro, wonderful words, listening. 
listening is something that I think all direct sellers do better than any other kind of retail partner in so much as they're all about trying to help that person in front of them. Now, you can only do that so far with digital. And I think what where our guys have been really, really agile, I want to say our guys, I mean, sort of the industry, is they've found a way to kind of reach out through Facebook groups, Instagram stories, those kind of things, and make their stories about that person who might be watching and try to do their very best to be in the shoes of the person in front of them and find out how they can actually help. From our experience, and it was funny you were talking about sort of the first three months of last year, Suzanne was saying how, how nervous you were about the industry. I can remember being at DSA uh, sort of council meeting with you saying, that's it. Absolutely terrified, you know, March World Day season for us, a huge book selling season for us. The schools are shut. What are we going to do? It's, it's doom and gloom. But that agility of our people to think, okay, so teachers still need help. Parents, more than ever in the last 12 months, needed that help with homeschooling. How can we use these platforms, things like Facebook, again, messaging, WhatsApping, all these kind of you know, instant technologies? How can we use them to still position ourselves in a way that we can support these people who are struggling in all sorts of different ways again none of us expected to be teachers for the last sort of 12 months and yet that's what we had to do at home <laughs> teachers themselves had to find a way to migrate their lessons onto sort of you know platforms and technology what could we do to be there for them and i think that's where our story at least we found that success we used the platforms we didn't change our approach we changed that desire to make a difference and support we just use the platforms in a better way to, to still achieve the same goal to still be there for those customers and looking ahead because it's a really interesting time now as you know the world starts to open up and i think people are you know exhausted by zoom and a little bit sort of tired of screen how do we continue building those relationships particularly again as alessandro says i mean i think it's it's a i wouldn't say it's 50 percent, but it's a fair proportion of our sales force at the moment who joined us during the pandemic and so have never hand sold how do we support them in finding the confidence to continue to try and make a difference but in a way where they have to go back out into the real world and, and speak to people and not run a business behind screen because this is just one way i think that um, direct sellers can can grow their teams grow their communities grow their sales you know it's, it's a very powerful channel certainly for us we've invested a huge amount uh, of time and money in building websites and technology platforms that allow our organizers to connect and have that kind of personal interaction more with their customers. But equally, bringing it back to the kind of putting the book in somebody's hand, what will that look like as we kind of edge back into the real world with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of trepidation, um, but at the same time, a huge excitement of knowing that you can, you can still make a difference, albeit you've got both now you've got you've got the fantastic technology and you've got the ability to walk into a school walk into a classroom do a home party and all those kind of things that you know, always made what we do magical yeah oh no it's amazing and, and i for one can't thank you enough because i think osborne books are one of the things that helped me get through from my my i learned very early on in lockdown that i did not miss my vocation as a teacher this was not something I should have done. So, so I, for one, am very grateful that those, you know, those uh, lines of communication stayed open. So Cliff, coming on to you, like the one-to-one -one diet, obviously this, it, the name's in the title, isn't it? It was one-to-one. -one. It was about people inspiring people, reaching out and touching. So how did you cope with that there? And, and what, what, what's next for you? Um, well, a bit, a bit like people have talked about, to start with at the very beginning, we probably didn't. So the initial shock uh, was quite scary for us, like everybody, for all the reasons that we, we know. And we were thinking, well, how on earth does this happen? And there was a good few weeks, perhaps a month or so, where sales were very low. Consultants weren't really able to run their business in the normal way. People were just not thinking about dieting and all that kind of thing. And as we've already touched, really, uh, they adapted and we adapted once that shock had passed, I suppose. So that happened in a few ways. One was the digital transformation. So some things that we'd kind of held for a very long time uh, that you had to have face-to-face -face consultations. We didn't have any digital solutions. It was all about one-to-one, -one, as you say. Uh, we had to very quickly embrace the digital ways of working. So, you know, Zoom and that, that kind of thing, but also put some framework around that. And in fact, the, the, the consultants, the networks, the sellers were already on that journey anyway. So by the time we kind of made those changes, they, they were, if not uh, with us, ahead of us. So 
they adapted and, and actually what we then saw was a really, really um, a, a fantastic transformation because we, we started to reach the existing customer base, but also some people who are perhaps crying out for that type of face-to-face -face solution that isn't necessarily you know, person to person. So we had to adapt quite quickly. Um, lots of uh, technical changes in the background and lots of kind of soul searching, but it happened. And as a result of that, as the, the, the chaps that we talked about, we, we ended up having um, a, a record second half of last year. I mean, it was just a phenomenal shift with all of these things going on around us um, because a few reasons, people are more or were more health conscious at that time, but also as I say, we found a way of connecting people and that's what our industry is all about. It's about connecting people. And of course, if you can do that digitally as well as face to face, then fantastic. So we definitely saw that improvement come through. Looking ahead, um, I would say there's um, there's still some development, some understanding to, to go through. So what does the outcome, eventual outcome look like? I suspect it will be a blend of face to face and digital. Uh, we just like others i'm sure still need to do a bit of work on what the digital framework looks like so there's work still there to be done but we're, we're on that journey and i think uh, it's an exciting one because we're looking at a very different type of customer different t customer needs and the consultants who are obviously representing our brands are also looking for different things so we're, we're, we're in that place right now but it, it looks very positive i have to say that's amazing. And I was lucky enough to um, last year um, be able to come and judge your health awards, which was phenomenal. Hearing the stories of some of the people that go through it is great. But I'm, I'm going to do it again this year. And I'm, I'm even more interested just to see how those stories have built over over what's been an unprecedented time of, of lockdown. You know, so, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that because it's, um, yep. you know, what, it, it's a heartbreaking moment, isn't it? Those awards uh, is a box of tissues at the ready when you listen to some of what people have been through and their journeys. But it's, it's incredible. And I think, you know, that the one-to-one -one diet as it's so I'm so pleased it's done so well because I think in these times it's been um, you know it's been equally as hard but I think one of the other things obviously you know we've done this report we were really interested to hear from the people on the ground actually doing you know actually in the forefront as it were out there um, representing representing your brands um, one of the other areas is philanthropy and, and our purpose and I think you know that's so important as a sector and something we often don't shout loudly enough about um, you know we, we touched on it in the in the report but it's it's those moments of actually over two million pounds of um of charitable donations were made by dsa member companies last year which is an incredible you know we don't we don't shout at it we just sort of quietly get on and do it but mark i, I know this is a key focus for osborne and I, i'd really like if, if you're happy to talk us through the role that, that you play in in um, philanthropy and, and what sort of what direction you think you're going to take this moving forward yeah sure i mean <sighs> It's a very important part of the Osborne ethos. The thing about Osborne Publishing is sort of, as a wider organisation, we have a charitable foundation that I've had for many years, uh, whose entire focus is solely around sort of the improvement and empowerment of children's education, giving children opportunity to access sort of books and learning and education in a way that perhaps traditionally doesn't come easily to them or their families. Um, that fortunately has continued, you know, hasn't been affected by the pandemic and we continue to wrap that up. What I love touching on your words this is our, about our industries. I think in many ways, that sounds cliche, we are quite a philanthropic industry in so much as the way that we can reach audiences, the kind of you know, the dusty corners, certainly for us, we can get books into the hands of kids who's, you know, whose families for whatever reason might not ever walk into a bookshop. So there's all those kind of little things that day to day will make a difference. But Again, building on some of the technologies uh, that are now available to us, part of the foundation's uh, program is to put out uh, an app called Teacher Wants to Read, which has been incredibly successful over the last couple of years. I think it's like 300 million users and something like 30 million individual players. That in itself was designed to support learning in schools internationally uh, and give children a chance to have fun whilst learning. And that's always been a, a big part of what certainly Peter Osborne um, let's try to instill in the books and in the organisation. You know, we want to make learning fun. We don't want to we want to make knowledge irresistible. I think is one of the, sort of the touch points. And then expanding on that, in our particular little world of us, want sort of books at home. Uh, we make it a priority to ensure that every single book does find a home. So even those that sort of make their way back to us, uh, we, we've partnered with a number of charities in Africa to get uh, books out to schools there. Most recently, we're working with an organisation called. 
react, who um, empower children with disabilities in terms of their learning and education. So lots of things going on. I mean, we're, relatively speaking, quite a small player in the sort of direct selling world, but hopefully, hopefully we do have it. No, that's amazing. It's it's great, and I and I, you know, it always surprises me how much goes on. And uh, and the thing I like about it really is that we don't feel the need to shout about it. It's just almost a given that will help people that are less fortunate. And I, you know, I think as a sector, that's nice. And I, I know when I started to come in as a director general, it it blew my mind that everybody wanted to give advice and help to help if they, essentially their competitors. As a as an industry, we all seem to work together. You know, and I I, I don't think that happens anywhere else where where people do. But the Direct Selling Association had a, had a moment that we didn't want to go back to normal as everybody talked about we wanted to go forward to better so I'm going to ask you uh, what you know I'll come to each of you but I, I think the question for me is what's the best what's your what's the greatest achievement you've made in this in this pandemic in this in this kind of period of time what's the bit of the business that you think I saw you all take a deep breath in there she's she's gone, she's gone rogue she's gone rogue but what's the one that you think do you know what that's that's the bit that I hang my hat on and say oh, I'm so I'm so impressed with that and for me I'll, I'll kick it off because it's a you know it's, it's a throw out there question but for me I think the thing that I'm most blown away by is the entrepreneurialism and the the lack of um the lack of being sucked down into negativity and, uh, you know, those 631,000 sellers just stepping up and saying, we'll find a way, we'll find a way to keep our businesses going, we'll find a way to um, protect the industry and we'll find a way to get goods to people. And, you know, we, we as a sector provided an invaluable service when people were in lockdown and they, could, they were self-isolating and they couldn't go out, um, you know, and we could drop stuff at the door safely for them and mean that we could get them all the things that they needed. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's incredible from from books to dietaries to cooking stuff to, to every bit that the sector offers I think that's amazing so for me it's the resilience I guess is the word that I do but I'd love to throw it out to you for the one thing that you'll take from this that you think your organization just just did so well that you'll keep you'll keep doing because it's moved you forward to better uh, Alessandro I'll, I'll start with you yeah you could say this all so I could just compare what you just said uh for me, what amazed me during the time of pandemic was uh, the, uh, how our consultant embraced uh, that journey and that with courage and openness. So they were um, able to adapt and not just to, to be able in some way to transform from a face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual activity and still to be able to create that connection, to create that emotion with, uh, with our customers. As you know, I keep saying we don't sell a product, we sell an experience. And uh, our consultants are the best ambassadors. They are customer by themselves, but they are very passionate. So uh, in, uh, it's fascinating that in the survey, we one of the main 72% of our consultants join direct selling for the love of their products. And that's all about direct selling. So because yeah, our advisors are the best ambassadors of our products, they really love what they do and they were trying to be contagious uh, in, in that love on uh, in the passion that they share. So for me, the success is all about our advisors, is their love and their passion, that is what motiva motivates me every day and what gives me confidence for the future as well. Oh, amazing, well said, well said. Cliff, follow that. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a danger we might all say the same thing in a different way, but perhaps that's a message in itself. So I, I think I, I was going to use the word belief. So um, if anything, when, when I look back, uh, and even now, it was the belief from consultants, from, from people that worked at uh, HQ, belief in themselves, belief in the brand, belief in the products, belief in this industry, and also in each other. So everybody really did pull together one way or another. Um, and there were times, as we've already described, where it could be so easy not to go that way, but people did. And, you know, that leads to people adapting and being positive and being passionate. But the belief is, is what I think we can be most proud of, belief in, in everything that surrounds our great industry, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I completely concur. And I think was it they say teamwork makes the dream work, doesn't, doesn't it? And it's and yeah, the people just really pull together. And bearing in mind that they're all individuals that run their own businesses, actually, when you see those people coming together in teams, it makes it even more phenomenal because they're not paid to do that. They're paid to run their own business. So that support network yeah. is is even more impressive than it would be in any other sector. And and last but not least, Mark, what's the one thing you'll take from this as being as being the moment? <laughs> Yeah, different slant on, on the same theme, really. It, I think it's it's the commitment. It's the commitment and willingness to continue to want to help that person in front of you, to listen and make a difference. That That's what uh, 
it's just you know it's blown me away in terms of our, our sales force our organizers regardless of the challenges that you know, we've all faced personally professionally they kept wanting to go out and help that person in front of them and i think again i think that's industry-wide it's just in the nature of what we do um and that's why we've had such a phenomenal year and long may it continue Absolutely. And I think interesting, I'm yet to do a round table where the word community doesn't come up. And I think it came up in the report as well. Like people look at their businesses as a community. How do they help their community? You know, from whether it's philanthropy to delivering to customers to just being part of a bigger team and the organisation that people really, really do feel it's a community, which um, which is great. So before I let you go, before we move to close, because um, I know you're all busy and you've got massive industries to run out, massive businesses to run out there. But I would like to ask each of you to just give me three words on your thoughts of the future of direct selling in the uh, in the next one to two years so um, that's tough isn't it and I I know you all just want to say I love you but it's not those three little words it's another three little words so um <laughs> so I'll hand it over so um so it will stick in the same order just for just for research so Alexandra where um which where, where yeah uh so the first word word for me is young uh, uh the last direct selling report suggests we will be able to attract more and more youngsters in our industry and that's great uh news for me the second world will be hybrid, uh, both in terms of virtual and face-to-face -face experience, but also in terms of securing a flexible work-life balance for our consultant, which is one of the main motivation for our consultant to join our direct selling business. And the third world for me is omnichannel, uh, so direct selling uh, in three connected channel, whether it's person to person, online, and store, with our consultants at the heart of it, which is the key point. So. For me, as long as we continue to attract and retain enthusiastic people in our business, there is a future for the direct selling, and that's what we aim for. Lovely. Thank you, Alessandro. Cliff, how about you? Your three little words. Three little words. Um, I would say, um, because of all the things we've learned, all the things we've been through, um, you could condense what the future looks like to the next chapter. As simple as that, because I think we really are looking at a brand new story or at least a new chapter in that story for all of our businesses and certainly industry as a whole. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Mark, for you. Knowing what I know about um, our guys, where they want to head next, I think for us, what's really important is a stronger partnership. That would be my three words. And so much as working much more closely and being continuing to be agile. Uh, in whatever comes our way. I love the Omnichannel. I love the idea of, you know, just approaching this business in all sorts of different ways, but doing that better together. I think that's, that's the future. Yeah, no, I think that's brilliant. I think that's brilliant. For me, I live my life by three words and I say to my girls are the same words. That's honesty, integrity and loyalty. And if you do all of those three things and you do them well, you can't go wrong both personally and professionally. And I think the sec this sector for me absolutely sums that up. I think it's an amazing, you know, it's an amazing encompassment of a great community. But I love the young. I love the hybrid. I love the omnichannel. I absolutely love the next chapter. I think the stronger partnership is great, but it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be worth my weight in gold or, or or the salt or whatever it could be if I didn't say for the DSA it has to be forward to better so I'm very excited about the next chapter thank you very much for joining me and having this discussion and uh, and it's been you know I hope everyone watching has found it very very useful and the report is now out everybody can read what's in there really get under the skin of it all and know that the one billion pounds that we made in sales revenue in retail uh, in retail revenue that's that's incredible um, and as I say the 631,000 people earning an average of 481 pounds a, a week that's uh, oh no a month a month sorry I'm over egging it maybe it'll be maybe it'll be a week in time to come but, uh, but no thank you very very much indeed and I'm looking forward to forward to better and uh, heading up the sector hopefully out of lockdown sooner we've had freedom day haven't we so now we just need to keep on the right tracks and, uh, and see what 20 end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022 brings us so gentlemen it's been a pleasure thank you very very much indeed and um, I will see you all soon take care